to uh, quantum physics. And we were discussing <clears throat> trying to um, um, understand the difference between astrophysics and quantum physics and how quantum physics deals with the minutest particles and is trying to break it down so that we can understand the, um, <clears throat> the building blocks of all matter. And I said that quantum theory is really man's, it's a theoretical, let me tell you, all physics is pretty much theoretical. I mean, it all starts theoretical. Bunch of it is still theoretical. If you talk about some of the most common things in astrophysics or quantum physics, they don't have any explanation. You know what one of the biggest mysteries in physics is? Gravity. Gravity. They have no explanation for, for gravity. And, uh, you know, well, I say they, they have a theoretical explanation called gravitons, which there is nothing, they don't know of anything that exists. They just named it and called it that until they figured it out. Okay. Theoretical framework is what physics is trying to give us. <laughs> That's why to know the Lord, to know the, the, principles of the Lord by which, uh, of his nature, not just principles, but like God has a book of principles, like he would have a book of Ten Commandments. No. The principles of his life and of his nature. Then you begin to understand all things because why? We understand all things by Christ or you don't really understand it at all. So we were talking about the smallest, minutest particles that you cannot see. Well, um, small things make large. Um, if you consider a picture, um, even a photo on a computer, if it's pixelized, meaning little pixels, if it's, uh, what's the largest dot per inch now? 2,000 or something like that, or is it more than that? Is it 48,000 now? Anyway, you, you know, a, a picture on a computer, if it's pixelized, is not a picture at all. It's, it's a bunch of dots. Do you understand that? It's just dots. That's all it is. You get down to microscope, you go, this thing's just a bunch of round dots, you know? But you thought it was, uh, you know, you thought it was something. Well, it is. All of those little tiny dots, pixel, pixels is what they're called, makes that picture, adds just the right color until you see it. I mean, an example of that is anybody ever seen a picture of Jesus that was actually written with the Gospel of John? And the way they write the Gospel of John, it's the whole, if you read it, it's the Gospel of John. If you step back and look at it, it's a like a photo. It's like a picture of Jesus, you know. Well, that's what you should see in the Gospel of John, <laughs> you know. That's what you should see as you read the Bible. You should see the Lord. You shouldn't just see ink on white paper. You shouldn't just see words. You shouldn't just see chapters. You shouldn't just see studies. You should see reality. You should see the Lord. And in seeing the Lord, the Bible says we will be changed into that same image. If we don't see the Lord, what's our change going to be? We'll become a Pharisee. We'll know the commandments. We'll know what's right and wrong, but we won't have the nature. We won't have the life to be able to carry it out, and it'll be law. It'll be nothing but law. And I don't want law. I don't want rules. Rules are fine. We have rules around here, but the rules suggest that maybe you, if you're having trouble with the rules, it's probably because you never got the spirit of the thing. You never got the life of the thing. Because the rules are just simply there to show you, to help you gauge where you are in conformity to Christ. Jesus lays down his life. He doesn't need to be told, this is how you do it every time. 
You understand what I just said? Jesus is a lamb. He lays down his life. He doesn't need a set of rules. He does it automatically. It's his way, you see. But if we're bumping heads with the rules, it means we probably don't have the spirit of the thing. We probably don't have the life of the thing. <clears throat> and so... Um, um, Let's see, as we have seen, astrophysics expresses part of the truth, while quantum physics, com physics comes from another angle. And that's because God can't be contained in one part. The whole universe, astrophysics, the heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament showeth his handiwork. But that's only one angle. That's only one part. That's if you see God on a big scale. But God, Jesus says this, if you are faithful with that which is least, I'll give you more. And so for us, you know, in fact, I probably have it here. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm heading that direction. <clears throat> if we are faithful with quantum physics, it'll explain astrophysics. Now why? Why is that? I, I'm sure I've got all this <coughs> down here, but in case I don't, or uh, I've already said it, if you take the sun, or you take the earth, or you take a person on the earth, or you take a cell, one little cell off their body, or if you take a nebula in the universe, or if you take a black hole, or you take any, any object, they are made of atoms, and atoms are made of electrons and protons and neutrons, and gluons hold them together, and quarks what makes them go around, and so every huge object, everything, this, this desk, this Bible, this thing right here, me, this nose, that microphone, everything is made of atoms and subatomic particles from there. Everything. Everything. All right. So instead of looking for the bigger you find out what everything is made of in its smallest particle. Do you understand where we're going with this? So that's, in fact, I wrote right here, let's see. Uh, the beauty of quantum physics is that instead of tackling the great mysteries of black holes, neutron stars, or the fabric of space, all is made up from very small particles Though these particles are incredibly small, all things have the same basic atoms. Okay? So that means, well, they all look different. Why, metal looks different from water. Right? Metal looks, they're both made up of atoms. But isn't water vapor water? in vapor form, and is an ice water in solid form? And they're very different, and yet they're the same exact molecules, the same thing, but they are just in a different state. So as you begin to examine all these things, you begin to realize there is a core, there is a central reality. It doesn't matter. We can forget all of the differences when you get down to a quantum level. When you get down to, the, to this level, little things make a big difference. Little things make a big difference. I wrote, it, it's human nature to seek great things. Oh, I want to do great things for God. Can I get an amen on that? Anybody ever had that? I want to do something great for God. Well, how about loving your neighbor? How about laying down your life? How about, how about 
uh, forgiving someone. No, no, I want to do great things for God. I want to do big, great things, you know. But on these little quantum levels, on these little things like that, we let them slip. We don't, we don't pay attention, but God does. <clears throat> so it is human nature to seek great things. Our motive behind it is to display our great knowledge and achievements and our great pride. Arguyoso, prideful over these things. We think the big things of life are the important things and that's where we're just wrong. The big things of life are made of the little things. That, I mean, that makes perfect sense if you think about it. I mean, it, it makes perfect sense in physics, but it makes perfect sense in God, too. And if we're not willing to be with the Lord in those little things, I don't care what you do big, you haven't really done it. It's not the right molecules, if you will. It's not the li right fabric. It's not the, the, the correct uh, particles. <clears throat> Um, we think the big things of life are important, are the important things. Little things seem less important, so they receive little attention. It's just a little thing. Anybody ever said that? Well, it's just a little thing. You know. Uh, man has changed the key of life to a minor key talking about string theory now, but we've, we've literally changed life not to a awe key, you know, an awesome key, but to a minor key. And uh, we've lost what is major and emphasized what is minor. We always think that what is major is what is biggest. Not true, but that's what we think. We think the bigger it is, you know, I mean, I learned that, you know, I learned that when I was a kid. You know, I remember seeing big packages and they opened it up and it was something I would never have wanted. And then, you know, for example, if somebody opens a little bitty package and they get an iPod because they wanted an iPod, they go, oh my God, you know. It was so little, how did I know, you know. Oh, I thought it was just another Bible, a little Bible. <clears throat> so, um, what is minor is always considered smaller with God. Or what is minor is always considered smaller, but it's not. What is smaller is not necessarily a minor thing. It is the foundation or the building block of everything else. We have learned, um, in this day and age, we have learned beyond our capacity to utilize. We have learned much in terms of what is minor to God. We've learned how to set up huge evangelistic things well, for example, I was a missionary in Jamaica, Jamaica, for several years. And we were back off in the bush area. I mean, we were not near big civilizations. So people say, oh, you went to Jamaica? <laughs> you know, it wasn't, trust me, where we were, it wasn't, you know, all that. And being back off in there, we were there for a certain amount of time, and these these um, if these um, I'm, I don't know evangelists came through, and they set up this big meeting in this church that that I minister at, and they set up you know, and they had we're going to be setting up, we're going to have cameras, we're going to have singers, and we're going to have a big bunch of things going on up here and. It's going to be exciting, and we want everybody to come. Well, these people have never seen anything like that, okay? We'd been living with them for some time. We knew them. 
We knew where they were at spiritually. We knew what, you know, what was going on. So, so they set up this big old thing, and everybody came. Everybody in that whole area came. Why? Well, I don't know. I mean, the evangelists didn't put that in their newsletter when they sent it out later on. They put, we put on this big evangelistic crusade, and everybody in the whole area came. Why would they do that? I'll tell you exactly why. In that country, in that place, there's nothing going on. I don't care if it's Jesus or, you know, Satan. If it's a big enough deal, they'll come to see it. Uh, and I, that's just a fact, and we knew that, you know. And so the first night they had an altar call, and all these people came forward. And, of course, in their newsletter when they sent it out later afterwards, well, we saved um, 2,000 on the first night. So the next night they had an altar call, and all these people came down. Well, I happen to know the people, and the same people came down again. The next night, we had a hundred and fifty, you know, or a thousand five hundred saved. It's the same people. <laughs> they don't know the difference. They don't know them, you know. And that happened the whole week long. Well, after they left, we knew those people, and a lot of them went right back to the way they were living before because they didn't know what they were coming down. They were coming down for whatever they could get. Okay, they weren't, you know. And everybody basically went back to the way that they were before these people came. Now, they didn't know it. They changed the world. That's what their newsletter said. We changed the world in Jamaica. We shook that whole area. No, you didn't. You didn't even nudge it. You know. Hey, wake up. Uh, you know, they weren't changed. They weren't even affected. I'm sure they enjoyed the show. You know, that's a good show, you know. Give them something to talk about. Well, you know, here we were in our early 20s. We're watching this, and we're reading the word and seeing that Jesus is the change or there is no change. You know what I mean? And we're going, oh my God, here's living proof right here. And here is the contrast between religion and Christ. And I'm not trying to put them down. I'm just telling you, folks, they touted that as the biggest thing and that they had really done a real work and everything and we knew better no one that we could find had really been changed by any of that the people that were on fire for the Lord stayed on fire the people that weren't weren't you know and <clears throat> so anyway I don't remember oh I got off on uh, uh, that we know all this stuff but only Jesus and only the cross and only Christ and him crucified is truly going to change someone because we don't need a change. We need an exchange. We need Christ as our life, not as our helper. Jesus is not our butler. If anything, we're supposed to be his butler, his helper. <laughs> it's just sad how we treat the Lord. All right. Um, and, and, you know, this, this whole thing of astrophysics or quantum physics, to me, it all plays in because um, there is just the necessity to look behind the scene, behind what is obser immediately observable. And, you know, I've had people say, well, the preaching of the cross is not true. It couldn't be true because brother so-and-so did this, or sister so-and-so did that. Do you all know what I'm talking People say stuff like that. Well, you know, I mean, that's, that's fine, but what was it? Um, when they discovered the planet Uranus, and they were 
observing it and everything, and finally they said, you know what, this planet does not follow the laws of Newton. Just like, well, you know, you say the cross is true. You say the preaching of the cross is the only way to really change somebody. But what about so-and-so? What about Brother Uranus? Because he's not following the laws that Newton laid down. It's going completely opposite. And somebody finally went, wait a minute. We know that these laws are true. We know that this is the true gospel. We know this is the truth. So there has to be something else pulling on Uranus to cause it to do that. And so two guys, one was in French, I think, and one was English, they started studying this, and the Frenchman got there first. They started saying, well, at a certain juncture, when it gets here, it doesn't react the same. And they said, there must be another pull other than the regular Newtonian laws. There must be another pull. And they, they said, we think there's another planet be, you know, further out from this planet. We don't see it. We haven't discovered it. So by, by calculating how it moved at a certain place, they ended up putting an exact calculation of where this new planet was going to be. And sure enough, they discovered Neptune. Because when it got to that place, it would fall under the gravitational pull of Neptune. You see, it had pulls that the others didn't have. And so it wasn't behaving like what is normal. All right. Well, we are talking about the Lord here. <laughs> We're talking about there being pulls in people's lives that make it appear like the Newtonian laws, the laws of Newton, Isaac Newton, the laws of Christ, the laws of the cross, the laws of Christ and crucified don't work, when in reality they do work. But sometimes some of the planets, and in this case, Uranus. <laughs> I'm going to turn red because I'm wanting to go somewhere really bad and say something, but I'm not going to. You can make yourself, never mind. Um, yes. Yes. Even your actions can mislead you because we can we can survive things that we don't realize we've survived until the cross has done a subatomic devastation. Well, you cannot find that motive anymore. It is the sun. Well, when you examine this stuff, I mean, really, it's okay to jump back and forth between astrophysics, the study of the whole universe, and quantum physics because if you study just a regular flow of take our solar system, you put the sun in the middle, and then you put Mercury and, and uh, Venus and Earth and Mars and on and on and on, and these things are, you know, they're going around the core. They're going around the sun. They're going around the center, right? Okay. Well, if you get down on a an atomic level and subatomic level, then you've got a nucleus right here, and then you've got, let's see if I can even come close to drawing this, which is pretty exciting. There you go. There you go. These, this is the path of electrons going around a nucleus. Isn't this the basic same pattern of the solar system? There's a nucleus, and there's that which is centered on it. And, you know, the same thing is true. 
they first discovered electrons mainly from the, uh, what do they call it, the electromagnetic radiation. Yeah, we call it light. <laughs> <laughs> but that's their, that's what they do. They want to make it difficult. Electromagnetic, oh, there's electromagnetic ra radiation coming out of the, yeah, I turned on the light. Oh, yeah, that's right. But that's how they discovered it, the reaction of electrons and the photons that they would shoot off and stuff. And then from that, they began to discover the nucleus, protons and neutrons, and on and on. What I'm describing to you is, the same thing, whether it's vastly huge or little bitty, there are certain truths that are, seem to be the same truth, no matter how far away they go. It points to the truth as it is in Jesus. And the, the basic atom is made up of three parts. The three make one atom. Protons, neutrons, and electrons. Three in one. How many atoms is that? One. How many parts is it? Three. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The Spiritu Santo. Amen? Yes. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Well, and let's, I'm jumping around here. I don't know what I'll ever get done with. <clears throat> but if you, take, if you take the splitting of an atom, if you split an atom, what are you going to get? An atomic reaction. An atomic, a huge reaction, not just a <laughs> An atom is, you know, you can't see it. But it is, it is so small that if you split that atom, then the explosion that goes out is devastating. I mean, you could literally, by just the right explosion in the right place, ruin the whole world. Well, okay, that's an atom. That is so minute that we can't even describe. But let's take a, a sun. Well, this sun, when it dies, when it's destroyed, what does it do? What is the term for it? I know some of you know. Supernova. It goes supernova. Okay. So when the sun, okay, now God knows we need suns in the image of Christ. Amen? God knows we need not just planets. And let me just say this flat out, straight out. You know, it's great if you're gravi gravity, gravity, what is it? Gravitating, thank you. It's great if you're gravitating to this place. It's great if I'm a son of God. That's great. But God wants us all to be sons in the image of Christ so that others will draw to many of us, but not to us, but to the son that is within us. You understand what I'm saying? To move from just being a planet pulled toward the sun to literally... Many suns. Okay, but how how is that going to happen? How are many suns going to be formed? Well, right here, when this sun goes supernova, it explodes. It it is destroyed, and when it goes supernova, it bursts out. Ultimately, it bursts out with all of these elements all of the elements that are in all of the elements. All of those elements. That's where they came from. All elements that make anything quote unquote real or anything that we know came from the death of a son. <laughs> well that makes perfect sense, doesn't it? I mean that's not, a, that shouldn't be a Mind blower all comes from the death of the Son, and when we lay down our life, by this perceive we the love of God that 
that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Say, that shouldn't be, but it's not just laying down my life for the brethren. This explosion creates the elements necessary to build second generation sons. Can I get a glory to God here? <coughs> yes, it's devastating to that son. But, you know, I mean, what, it, what is it that makes a, a true son? Well, it's a reliable source of energy. In other words, there's life and energy endless supply that's what a son is life and energy and an endless supply that just keeps burning but never burns up it's like Moses looking at the burning bush it's burning but it's not burning up it's burning but it's not burning out yes sir that's my baby <laughs> and so it, it, it has this, just this endless, you know, supply. And that endless supply is the result of two things. It is the result of gravity and electromagnetism. Okay, well, that's good scientifically, but what does, I mean, what does that mean? It means that there are different things that affect different things. I'll just explain it like this. Gravity holds us to the earth. Okay? Keeps us held to the earth, right? Electromagnetism keeps us held together. Okay? So, that means that there are there are different principles that work under different circumstances. You may be a Christian and you may understand gravity, some, some spiritual truth about God that keeps you held to the earth, doing your ministry, carrying out the things, living in that realm. But if you go deeper, you go into electromagnetism, you begin to understand what literally holds every particle of you and everything else together. You begin to comprehend the core issues, not the outward issues, and oh, thank God, we're not flying off into space. Way greater than that. <coughs> Way greater than that. <coughs> and, and what makes a reliable son? It eventually dies. It becomes the furnace of affliction, like a blacksmith, or a, <coughs> you know, when they used to take take hot things in there and they'd put it in the, the furnace and they'd get it red hot and then they'd get it white hot and then they'd get it blue hot. I'm talking about the, the different spectrums of light relating to the different, what is it, the different levels of being able to see. We see on one level of light, what's it called, Ezzy? One level of light. No, your favorite. Your favorite spectrum of light. Remember we were talking about it? Observable or optical or something light. What is it? Visible. There it is. See? Visible light, which is what? What? It's all of the colors, all of the spectrums smashed in together, and that's all we see. We don't see the individual layers. We don't see the depths. We don't see, and when I say the colors, I'm not just talking about colors. I'm talking about layers of ability to see beyond just sort of a meshing of everything together, and therefore I think I see. You know, seeing the way an eagle sees, seeing the way a, an owl in the night sees with a thermal, what's it called? Thermal. No, no, just the thermal, thermal uh, imaging, thermal Im imaging, where you don't actually see the object, you see the heat signature. You see the heat, you see 
the heat signature. Say, well, again, that's teaching us that there are so many levels that we don't know, but we get happy to just know that gravity holds me to the earth so I can live my little life. We never look into electromagnetism or anything else, and I'm using all of that strictly as an example of, of where is our heart to go after the Lord and to see the Lord in these things. <clears throat> um, all right, so lo- let's get back to, as I said, whether it's, whether it's an atom or a sun, many of the principles are the same, but if you get back to this level of quantum physics, there are 12, <clears throat> 12 basic particles Quantum physics, 12 basic particles that make up all matter. What? You know, there's 12 tribes and there's 12 apostles and there's, you know, you go on and on and on. Basically, 12 particles that make up everything. Okay? How they react with one another depends on what's formed. They can react in any number of ways to bring out water or, you know, this or that or whatever, you know. And there are, and these are, I should have wrote matter particles, because there's 12, I'll call them this isn't the best word in the world. I'll call them force or energy. And energy would be a better word, particles. And what happens is these 12 only show up in relationship to how these 12 relate. <laughs> if these 12 relate a certain way, then these, these are matter particles, and these are actually bringing the energy about to do it. Now, if you really want to know the truth, okay, that's, that's, that's all just absolute physics fact right there. There's nothing out of whack with that. But if you want to really, really get down to it, there are only three particles, matter particles, and one force particle. See that? You see that? Three, and then that one that make up 90% of everything we know and see, and that exists. The whole universe, every phenomenon from a black hole to a neutron star to a, to a quark to a photon to, you know, uh, and I'm going now to the littlest, to the biggest, you know, everything examined comes right down primarily to three particles and a force particle, and that force particle is not a separate one. It's not, it's not four. It's three and how they relate and the force that comes out that produces. <laughs> well, that makes sense, doesn't it? It makes perfect sense. I'm jumping ahead as if I'm not going to be teaching next week, but... <laughs> But it makes perfect sense because then you begin to realize <clears throat> that when you know, physicists, they won't tell you this, but they have a favorite particle. It's an electron. Okay, it's an electron. Because everything in our modern day world, I mean our, not last year, or I'm talking about all of our cell phones, I'm talking about every, the, I'm talking about the web, I'm talking about all of this stuff in our modern, most modern day world is built on that electron. <clears throat> and the force particle that it gives off when two electrons come close to one another is a photon. There's your force particle. And it is energy at work. It's no longer matter. It's energy at work. It's not just matter. It's not, it's not three solid things. It is the energy of how those three relate 
and therefore what it produces. Okay? <clears throat> so, we're saying all this, but what we're seeing in it is in the Lord, there's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And there is this Everything was created, and remember last class, we began with Genesis 1-1. I was going to say, when I had you turn there, before I let you know we were going to the Bible, I was going to say, there is an ancient text. There is an ancient text that goes back thousands of years, that gives us insight into physics today. Genesis 1, <laughs> that's the ancient text. And it goes back thousands of years. In the beginning, God. Padre Celestial, Hijo, Espíritu Santo. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the beginning, God. John 1, 1, all things were made by God. All things were made by him. Made, there's your photon. Made by, there's your three particles. If, and I'm going to try to just close a little early with this. If you think that you can produce anything, you are so, so silly. Notice I didn't say, you're an idiot. I thought about it, and then some, actually a couple of days ago, and I thought, you know, correctly we would say, well, that's, that's idiotic. You're not necessarily an idiot, but it's idiotic to think that we are part of the creating of anything, whether that's a good home life and a family that runs smoothly, to a ministry that becomes effective to a life that pleases God, all things come from these three particles and the energy they put out. <laughs> it's just incredible. It's just incredible to realize Everything from the smallest thing to the grandest thing declares the glory of God, declares the reality of God, and is meant to shake us to our core to find a new core. And to quit looking for hope in ourselves. Can I get amen? And start finding it in the Lord. And to stop judging other particles. Can I get amen on that? judging other particles. Pray for them. But before you pray for them, make sure you're lined up with the three in one. Make sure you're lined up with the only force that ever created anything. <coughs> and, you know, since I do have a few more minutes, I'm just going to give you one more example. And that is water. What makes water wet? What makes water wet? Well, what is what is water? H2O. Two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen. H2O, right? That's that's water. A water molecule. H2O, because water is made up of molecules that are H2O. All right. If you gather some H2O particles together, all right, we got several here. They, it is not wet to the touch. Wetness is the result of many of them coming together and they have no ability in themselves 
as a single entity, they cannot produce wetness at all. And if you examine a molecule of H2O, you will find nothing within its makeup to produce wetness. But when it becomes a system, a body, more than itself, when it starts adding numbers to it, and this is not just true in this, I'm actually just using this as an example, an incredible thing happens, and that's where this earth came from, and you and everything else, an incredible thing happens is that when you get enough of them together, they create a whole different system than what they were as individuals completely different thing. And they're able to do what they never could do as individuals. It's called the body of Christ. It's called God's way of, his first way to bring you anything out of you or bring anything to you is by these three particles at work releasing the energy to do it. The second way is he adds numbers and that becomes his body. And from that, <clears throat> it produces, and I wish I could just go over and over so many systems with you and prove this to you. It is absolutely the truth throughout physics <clears throat> that they began to fool physicists and normal thinking because when you only examine the one, you cannot come up with how that is produced. There is no explanation, and they'll tell you that. How is that? And their only conclusion is, when they come together and form a system, they're able to do what they could never do as individuals. May we form up as the body of Christ and do what we never could do as individuals. Let's pray. Father, we just ask you to, Release the Holy Spirit and the Spirit of the Word to begin to transform us and to transform us into something beyond ourselves, the body of Christ, so that all that He is will manifest through us and people will look and wonder and study us and say, how can, how can that come out of them? And we will know it's only by you, by being joined to you and joined to one another. Bless the reality of your word to our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen.